Good morning. Okay, so give me a second. Kind of a little nervous getting in front of all you. Well, I am excited and I'm honored that I get to speak in front of you. And I pray that everybody that hears what I'm saying today hears it as a friend, just sharing some stories with you, just sharing my own struggles with you, um, as well as how much our God loves us. Um, so if you will, just relax so that I can relax. And let me just be your friend. Let me just share with you just some simple stories today. And hopefully they're going to touch your heart in a way that you'll take them home and be able to apply them to your own stories. Um, I'm going to start off a little serious. Are you ready? All right. So what if God told you to move back to the place that you had just left? A place that you had waited for a long time to move from. And what if God told you to sell your most prized possessions, your favorite things that belong to you, to get out of debt? And what if God told you to let someone else have the job that you needed when the employer ran out of hours to give to everyone. And then, what if you die a couple months later? What if hearing from God means leaving your family in a safe place, debt-free? And what if Letting that job go means that you spend time with your family that can never be given back. This is my story. And last week, Celia was going to share this part of the story with you. And, well, as God has a way of working things out, she didn't get to it. It didn't fit in. But maybe it's because I was supposed to share this story with you. See, Celia was going to share the perspective of a faithful servant who heard from God and acted obediently with no questions asked, regardless of what other people thought. And while that would be a really fun story that I would share with you, I'm going to share my story with you, my perspective. And unfortunately, mine is not as flattering as the faithful servant who heard from God and obeyed immediately. You see, that story is about me and my husband, Chris, and our family. And at one time, we lived with my mom. And if anybody lives with their parents as a grown adult, you can understand what a lovely challenge that can be, right? So we lived with my family, but it was great because we lived there rent-free. We didn't have any bills. We didn't really have any responsibilities. This was a time that we really used to get on our feet. Well, we finally got to move out, and I was so thankful. Chris, on one hand, was a little bit sad because my mom did our laundry for him and ironed his clothes, which I don't know how to do, and cooked his meals, had everything ready for him, so he really didn't see the urgency for us to have our own place. But needless to say, we did. We waited a long time to get to move into this place, and his aunt and uncle had actually fixed up a house that we were going to rent from them, and it was beautiful. We actually got to pick some of the details, and it was so pretty, and I loved it. Everything was new and fresh, and you know that feeling when you're like, this is it. This is a new beginning. I'm excited. So we move in, life is great, it's fun having our own independence. Chris cooked, because I didn't know how, and so he did his own laundry, because I didn't do it right. And so things were going great as we were being grown-ups, living in our own place. And then one day, Chris came home and said, well, it's time to move back to your mom's. And I said, well, bye, I think you heard something wrong. 
And so he said, no, I'm pretty confident that I heard God say, it's time to move back in with your mom. And again, I said, no, I'm pretty sure you didn't hear that. You should go check again. So time goes on and I would love to tell you that I willingly submitted and said, my husband knows best. And we moved in with my mom. Well, we did move in with my mom, but it wasn't so pretty. I was kind of bratty, and I kind of didn't want to be there, but we were there nonetheless. So we're at my mom's once again, living rent-free, her doing Chris's laundry, feeding him food, ironing his clothes. He loved it. And then time went on, and all of a sudden, one day, he came home, and he had money. And I said, whoa, where did you get that? What did you do today? Did you go to work? And he said, well, actually, I sold my golf clubs. And I just stopped because for Chris, that was a really big deal. He loved golf. And he had a set of golf clubs that he thought were, like, awesome. And I said, what do you mean you sold your golf clubs? Are you crazy? We're never going to be able to afford those ever again. And he said, I don't know. He said, when the time comes, I'll get something, but I feel like I'm supposed to sell them for now. So once again, I kind of acted like a brat and talked about how we were never going to have money for that ever again. And I can't believe you would do that. You must not really like to play golf, but that's fine because you'll get to be with me, which at that point, I'm sure he really wanted to be with me, right? <laughs> so time goes on a little bit more. And then suddenly, I don't know about you guys, but income tax time at our house was a really fun time. Anything that I'd seen all year long, well, not anything, but, you know, let's be realistic, but something that I'd wanted all year long was that time that I could finally get something, right? We could have some fun. Maybe we could go out to eat. I don't know. Just be grown-ups. And then Chris came home and he said, hey, got a plan for our income tax this year. And he said, we're not spending any of it on anything other than paying for bills and being out of debt. And I said, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I've waited all year to do something fun. And he said, nope, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what we're doing. And then he said, and in fact, he said, I already did it. Awesome. So we have no money. He said, nope, we have no money. He said, but we also don't have any debt either. And I said, all right, I don't know that I like that idea very much, but whatever. So again, I would love to tell you that I heard from God and that I was a faithful servant and I said, okay, we are going to obey. But I can't tell you that because once again, I was a bratty kid and I pouted for a little while and I didn't give up and I didn't let up on him, reminding him that it was his fault I didn't get to have any fun. Well, then he had a second job that was much needed, obviously, at this point. And so he comes home one day and he's like, hey, guess what? I quit my job. And I said, what? Are you crazy? First you did this, now you did this, and now you're doing this. What's wrong with you? Can you not understand that the Bible says that the wife should be a godly counsel to you? And don't you think that maybe you should run this by me at some point before you just do things? He said no. He just knew he was supposed to. And so I said, okay. So then I go through this time period where I really needed to talk to God and be like, listen, you're going to have to rein him in a little bit because he's getting a little bit crazy. And that's when God said, just obey. Honor your husband. Because when you choose to honor your husband, you will be honoring me. I said, ouch. That is not what I thought you were going to tell me. Which it never is, is it? And so... Like I said, we're at my mom's, we're debt free, and now he has no job, so we're spending a lot of time together, which was great. And then time goes by, and suddenly, unexpectedly, my husband passed away. And so, through that, I had to take recognition of what had just happened. You see, whenever I decided to obey my husband, to obey what God had said to him, I didn't just bring honor to my husband, but I brought honor to God. 
and therefore my family was rewarded. I understand that that reward does not look like what we would like for that to look like. But like I said, I was in a safe place. I had no worries financially about how I was going to overcome this debt now that the sole provider for our family was suddenly gone. I was in a place that I could mourn. I was in a place that I could just let go and be who it was that God was showing me I was at the time. So while I understand that that reward doesn't look like what I would have loved for it to look like, it did bring honor to the one who named me. And isn't that what we're living for? And if we love him so much and we honor him, he also shows us how much he honors us and how much he loves us. So I want to back up and tell you just a little story See, in this situation, God spoke to Chris, and God was very clear. Every time Chris did something, sold something, moved us somewhere, it was because he knew who was directing his steps, and he never questioned why. He just said, okay. And while it looked crazy from the outside to everybody what he was doing on the inside, it's because he had an inside track to the one who was telling him, the one who was preparing him, the one that was preparing his family for what's to come next. And so, although I didn't hear from God in those situations, I did love my husband enough and trust him enough to know that he was hearing from God. And so as I rewind to tell you another story about a time that I heard from God, I can look back now and see God's preparation at work. I can see his love for me at work before I ever knew that anything was even happening. So rewind a few months previous to Chris moving us back to my mom's house and selling all of his stuff and all of that greatness. We were here, and the details are a little fuzzy as far as, I can't remember if this was a worship practice or if this was an actual worship service, but you know how during worship, when you let go, when you surrender, when you don't care who's around you, all that you care about is hearing that voice, that love from the one who made you. Yeah, that was happening. And it felt so good. We were listening to the song, Praise You in the Storm. And I don't know about y'all, but anytime I hear that, I just cry anyways. So we're listening to that song, and I am praising him. My arms are lifted high in abandonment. I have surrendered it all to him. I felt so light and so free. I felt like I was really me. I was praising him, and I told him, I will praise you in whatever storm you bring my way. I love you. I want to follow you. I know that you have brought us through all of this to be closer to you. And so it felt so good. And then suddenly, in a split second, it all changed. I can't even describe to you how the timing was because it was so fast. But what happened was I was standing there with my arms high, have no recollection of what was going on around me. And God spoke to my spirit and said, it's going to get hard. And in that instant, I yanked my arms down, and I said, I don't want that, and I don't want to hear that. And I was so flooded with this emotion that I hadn't felt in a really long time, but it was that fear. It was that overwhelming feeling that he was telling me something. And so in that same exact instant, I remember I was standing up at the front, and I looked back at the soundboard so quickly and my eyes just fell on Chris. He was back there doing the sound, doing what it is that he always did. And then I said, you know what, God? It's okay. I know that as long as I have him, I can do whatever it is you bring my way. I'm ready, and we can do this. We've already come out of our storm, so whatever you're bringing, we're going to do this together. And then God said, you have me. I said, I know, I got you. We got you at the middle. Me and Chris, we're doing great. We got this. And so I was so excited and I was so happy because I knew that the three of us, we were going to weather some storms. So looking back, my God was preparing me in advance for what it is that he had in store for me. 
because although I didn't know the details of the journey, he already did. He had already set it up so that I would be prepared, so that I would have an idea of what was going to happen. So, there are times that I hear from God, there are times that somebody else hears from God. Sometimes when somebody else hears, it's equally as important to trust that God loves you enough to speak to someone else so that he can prepare you for what he has planned for you. So, like I said, God was preparing me, and God often talks to me as a parent-child relationship. And sometimes I think that's good, and then sometimes I don't know. So, if you will, if you are a parent in the room, if you will, just raise your hand really high. Parents, whoa, that's a lot of parents. Okay, but what about, do you have a parent, or have you had a parent? Can you raise your hand? Get out of town. That's everybody in here. Isn't that crazy? Well, here's the deal with that. So sometimes God speaks to us as our parent. If you are a parent, then you are full well aware that sometimes you have to tell your children something that maybe you don't want to tell them. You have to give them rules. You have to give them guidance. Sometimes you have to ground them a lot of times, and sometimes you just get to love them, right? So if God is our parent, then sometimes he's going to go through these same situations with us. As parents, do we give our children rules and guidelines and all these things just so that they can just have a miserable life and not get anywhere, not do anything and never have any fun? I know, right? But actually, it's quite the contrary. We set up these rules, we set up these guidelines and advice and love them and cheer them on, not because we don't want them to have life, but in fact, it's because we want them to experience the fullest life that they possibly can, right? So then, if we do that to our own children, how much do you think the one who created you, the one, like it says in the Psalms, took every detail into consideration to create you in the exact way that he created you. He set you up. He made you who you are. He gave every physical, every internal feature about you for a very specific reason. And if he took all that time to create you that way, then how much more do you think he loves you than we love our children? To me, that sounds like a lot. And to me, I'm thankful for that love. And so, if he loves us that much, then I'm pretty confident that he's going to give me some rules. He's going to give me some guidelines. And along the way, just like I explained to my daughter and my son the reason that I give these rules and guidelines, God is going to speak to me. And he's going to tell me why he has given these rules, these guidelines. And so it's my choice whether I want to understand, whether I want to hear from him, whether I want to listen to the sounds of his whispers that he gives to me. At my house, in order to um, not be a crazy yeller like I am, we do time out. And so um, one day, my daughter, see, here goes one of these stories that I just want to share with you as a friend and let you know what goes on at my house, but kind of like make it kind of pretty so that you don't really know. And so one day we are getting ready for my son's third birthday and I am so super pumped. I am like for the first time ever, maybe, I'm on time. My car is packed. I'm ready. I'm like, woohoo, yeah, we're fixing to be on time to Gavin's birthday. This is so awesome. All that morning as I'm preparing, I keep telling my daughter, please stop tumbling in the house. Please stop tumbling in the house. Gracie, can you please stop tumbling in the house? And all day long, I said that over and over and over and over. And so we're about to leave. Like, we're headed to the car. And all of a sudden, I hear a loud crash and I hear footsteps. I'm so sorry, Mom. What do you mean you're sorry, and what was that noise? She said, well, I was tumbling in the house, and I don't know what happened. So I calmly, very calmly, 
go to her bedroom and I noticed that my daughter was tumbling and stuck her foot through the window. That's not exactly what I said. <laughs> but I did, for her own protection, tell her, I need you to go sit on the couch. I need you to be very quiet. And I need you to just sit for a minute. And so I go, and I can hear her just sobbing because she, at this point, realizes the capacity of what just happened because really I'm now late for my son's birthday okay that's what happened so she's sitting on the couch and she is crying and I'm cleaning up glass and I'm trying to be very quiet and so it was in this crazy chaotic moment that God showed me that sometimes he needs to put us in a little time out too and I said, God, I do not have time to hear that right now, okay? Because did you see what she just did with her foot in this window? And so I clean it up. I go to her, and we talk about it. And I said, Gracie, I said, that is why all day I've told you, please stop tumbling in the house. Because as your mom, I know what could happen. And so she cried. She said, she's sorry. I forgave her. I said, baby, it wasn't about the window, it's about you hearing my sound and knowing why I explained something to you. So we get in the car, and of course we're late to the birthday party, but he's three, he had no idea. It was big fun and games, and we had a great day. But it was a moment that I recognized God speaking to me. And so then I thought how Gracie was in timeout, how she was crying, and how I ignored her for a moment not because I was finished with her, not because I was done with her, not because there wasn't a point to me cleaning up the glass in silence. But in her time out, in her moment of just brokenness, she had a moment to think about the love that I had for her and what it is that I had been telling her all day. So I thought about that, and then I thought about my son Gavin. And when he gets in time out, he doesn't really care. He doesn't really cry. He just sits there. And I can come to him and I say, baby, do you know why mommy put you in timeout? No. Well, let me tell you and I'll come back and we'll talk about it. So I tell him, I go on about, I come back, baby, do you know why I put, no. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Cause you know, the whole point is to, for them to understand why they got put in timeout, right? So over and over, I can come back. Finally, I'm like, all right, you can just get up because I don't know if you're going to get it. So then I thought of that perspective. So who am I? When God puts me in time out, do I cry to him and say, I'm so sorry that I didn't hear your sound, that I didn't hear your advice and your guidance all along? Or am I like my son Gavin and I'm like, yeah, I don't get it. So can I go on about my business? And so when you think about who are you, when you're in time out, what does he say to you? You see, if he is our father who loves us, he doesn't put us in time out because he's finished with you. He's put you in time out because he loves you even more and he has a reason that he needs you to hear. He needs you to understand what it is, the reason that he's put you there and what's going to happen because of it. You see, he has a word for you that he wants to share with you, but he can't do that when we're so busy hearing all of the sounds of the world that we can't even focus. And so... I started thinking about this time out and I started praying through it and I said God you know this whole year and a half I've been praying to you and I've been asking you what do you have me here for why is my family in this circumstance why did this have to happen God what is my purpose what do you want me to do do you want me just to go and sit and cry about it because I could be really good at that or do you have something that you need me to do through this time out? Do you have something that you need me to understand? And that's when he becomes very clear to me. He gave me a word, and since he gave me this word, I have not really shared it with anybody because then it takes action, and I'd rather just keep it to myself. And so <laughs> the word he gave me is forgive. 
And so, sorry, this front row is a little out of control up here. <laughs> sorry. So he gave me the word forgive. And at first, I said, that's a nice word. And we'll just leave that alone. But he didn't leave it alone. You know, it was like I did with Gavin. He kept coming back to me and saying, honey, do you know I have you sitting in time out? Do you know what this is for? And I said, nope, I don't. And so I didn't really want to acknowledge it. But then I finally did, and I came to this conclusion. It was time for me to forgive myself. It was time for me to acknowledge that first day when God told me it's going to get hard. And at first I was surrendered. And when he told me the thing that was uncomfortable, when he told me the thing that I didn't want to hear, I brought my arms in and I protected myself. And I said, I don't want that. And I don't want to hear that. So in this quiet time, when he shows me this word forgive, first it was to forgive myself. It was to forgive myself for that instant of shame and guilt that I was feeling for not wanting to follow him. Are you with me? Do you understand that sometimes he's going to tell you something that is a little bit on the uncomfortable side? Something that maybe you don't want to hear. And it's okay if you kind of flinch a little and say, I don't want that. Because he made you and he knew what your reaction was going to be long before you had ever even heard what it is that he was given to you to flinch about. And that is the beauty of the whole thing is that he loves you so much. He spent so much time detailing out everything about you, every little bitty detail about your journey that he knew how you were going to react. And he said, darling, it's okay. Let it go. I have forgiven you. Just like I told Gracie, baby, it's okay. It's just a window. It's not about the window. God said, Brandis, it's about you hearing that I have already provided for you for what was going to happen when you had no idea. And so I said, oh, that was really a lot. But forgiving ourselves sometimes can be the hardest part. And then I started thinking about the word forgive, and I started thinking about forgiving others, and is there somebody else that I need to forgive? Is there a circumstance? Is there a situation? And there were a few things, little things for me that had happened that I had let to become something bigger than it really was. And so I started to pray on these small things that were becoming big things when he never intended that for me. And so I started to forgive. And I want you to understand that sometimes forgiving somebody for something that they did to you does not justify what they did. But what it does is it releases you from the bondage of unforgiveness. It releases you from the bitterness that you have been carrying around because of your unforgiveness. God will take care of what God needs to take care of, but you need to take care of what you need to take care of. I had to take care of the things that I had to take care of. And so it wasn't easy. And sometimes that unforgiveness might mean I have to go to somebody. I have to say something to somebody that's probably going to be a little uncomfortable. But it's okay, because like he promised, I've got him, right? So I can go and I can do what I need to do. And sometimes that unforgiveness is just for myself. I say, you know what? I'm not going to be a victim because I am a victor in the name of Jesus Christ. And I will walk in a freedom that he has given to me long before I ever knew this detail was ever going to come up in my circumstance. And so I released that. I let go of that unforgiveness for others. And then came the word forgive in a much larger capacity that I was not ready for. You see, God, as loving as he is, showed me as the faithful parent that he is that it was time that I forgive God. And how unchristian does that sound that I am up here telling you there came a time that I had to forgive God. See, it's not that I was mad that Chris died. Well, I am. But not the way that you might think. You see, I believe with everything that I am that God has numbered our days before we were ever even born. 
I believe that he has laid out your seasons. I believe that he has a plan so perfectly for you that is for your love and for you to prosper. And yet, there is this number, there is this day that he has set out that we have no control over. So it's not that I was mad necessarily about that, but what I came to find out that really hurt was that with everything that I am, I believe this God who made me loves me. And I believe that he wants to set people free. I believe the stories that I've read in the Bible. I believe that he has given sight to the blind. I believe that he has given sound to the mute. And I believe that he has let the deaf hear his voice. I believe that he fed thousands. I believe that he made the impossible possible when he let the sun stand still for Joshua. You see, so I believe this. So with all of that belief, I also believe that my God wants to heal the sick and raise the dead. And so on that day, when I was crying to Him, when I was praying to Him, He was silent. Or was He? Because the truth is, months before anything had ever even happened, He had already told me, gonna get hard and in that time when he told me it's gonna get hard he gave me a promise and he said you have me and so as time goes on and I've sat in my time out he's forgiven me and I have forgiven him. I want you to know that that forgiveness isn't just a one-time thing. It is something that I have to ask him for daily. It is something I have to give to him daily. And he loves me so much that he's okay with me coming to him and saying, God, I have to forgive you again. I'm feeling a little stressed out. I'm really not liking this circumstance that you have put me in. And he reminds me with his sound, with his whisper, that he loves me, that he's never left me, that he never will leave me because he created me for a reason. And he loves me as his father, as his child. He has a plan for me. But he asked me, Brandis, are you willing to hear? And you see, with my unforgiveness towards him, I've had a little bit of a buffer. There's been this little bit of a wedge that has kept me from him. It doesn't mean I don't recklessly pursue him. It doesn't mean I want to not know him the way that he wants me to. But this little buffer has been a protection for me to kind of keep him at a distance. You see, as his child, I can say, God, I'm asking you the questions. What do you want me to do? Who am I? What's my purpose? Um, but I don't know if I really want to hear the answer. This buffer has become a security for me to ask the questions and to choose whether I hear the answer. It's a dangerous place to be though. You see, I can go on thinking my own thoughts when he's got them all there for me. And so it was through this quiet time that I realized that I was ready to take down this buffer. I was ready for the gap to be closed because I don't know why my circumstance looks the way that it does. I'm sure you're sitting there thinking of your own circumstances and why do they have to look the way that they do? The thing is, what we don't understand is he speaks to us and we have a choice to listen. We have a choice if we want to hear what he is saying. Sometimes we have to allow ourselves in a quiet place to hear his voice. We have to stop doing the daily busyness so that we can hear what it is that he wants to whisper so gently to you. And it's in that time that it might be uncomfortable, but he's given a promise that he won't leave you. He's not gonna make you do this alone. I will hope that today you will think about searching your heart for that thing. What is it that popped in your head when I started talking about the word that God gave me in forgiveness? What is that circumstance that came to your mind that suddenly quickened your heart and you knew? Is it a person? Is it a situation? Is it a memory? 
What is it that brings that little bit of pain that no one else can take care of? I want you guys to know that there is a prayer team here that wants to pray with you. There is a prayer team here that wants you to know that you don't have to do this alone. If something came to your mind, I want you to just be able to step out in fear, out of your fear, to come forward and ask for some prayer. God has whispered to this prayer team and said, I have you here for a reason. And that reason is us. You see, we get to go to the prayer team and say, I don't even know what my need is, but I know that God does because he provides and he prepares us way in advance. And so I want to encourage you, if something came to your mind, if something came to your heart, I pray that you will come forward to the people on the prayer team over here in the front or on the side of the stage and just ask somebody to love you. Ask somebody to just hold you for one second because you don't even know what it is that's going on. You see, what today might feel like your breakdown could be the beginning of your breakthrough. And God wants to be able to share with you. He wants to be able to tell you who you are and what he created you for. But sometimes we have to let that little gap go so that we can hear him totally and completely. So, like I said, I am just a friend who wanted to share some stories about how God speaks to me, how he um, loves me, how he wants to sometimes discipline me, but not because he's done with me, but because he has something he wants to say to me. So I pray that today we can hear his voice because it excites me to think about what it is that he has to say to each and every one of us. So if you will stand and I will pray for us to get out of here. That sounded kind of weird, huh? Thank you guys so much for just being here today. Heavenly Father, I am so thankful that you love me enough, that you let me get into that quiet time, that you let me get into that quiet place so that you can speak words of your love and of who you are to me. God, I pray for each and every person here. I pray that everybody that has heard this today has that gentle nudge from the loving parent that you are for reasons none other than the fact that you want them to know that they were created for more, that they were created for greatness, that, the, that there is something on the way that we don't have to just sit in the pain, in the silence, that you're not giving us the silent treatment. God, I pray that today as people walk away from here, your love is flooding them from their head to their toes. I pray that they walk in your spirit today knowing that you have created them, that you have prepared them, that you have given everything that it is that they need. God, we love you, we honor you, and we praise your name when we all say,